Greetings in the name of the Lord. Uh, my apologies for uh, such a long delay of uh, not posting a video. Uh, a lot has been happening and, and God has been working mightily, especially through this Lent season, this past Lent season before uh, Resurrection Sunday, which was a tremendous blessing in seeing people uh, give their lives to the Lord, but also people recommitting their lives to the Lord. Uh, in the Lent season, many of us who, who committed themselves in prayer, in fasting, in cleansing, uh, was being purified, sanctified. God was removing the dross, the impurities from our lives, which is the goal of a Lent season, being in the wilderness, being refined by the Lord through His Spirit so that we are completely dependent upon Him. And we had a great Resurrection Sunday. Uh, and the goal right now is learning how to be filled in the Holy Spirit, wait upon the Holy Spirit so that we can walk in the presence and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The very same Spirit person that actually ministered to Christ, empowered Christ, coached Jesus Christ, led Jesus Christ. Jesus was able to do everything he did because he was fully dependent upon the leading and the power and the person of the Holy Spirit. And he also partnered with the Holy Spirit. There's not a single thing that Jesus did by himself in isolation. He always was together with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I can do nothing. The Son of Man can do nothing by himself. And that word nothing means nothing. He was intentional about seeking and waiting and partnering with the Holy Spirit. So the, the Trinity was always being manifested. Never were they ever doing their own thing. And that's what I want to talk, talk about today. The power of togetherness, togetherness. We are better together than isolated. Have you heard of the marshmallow test? This test has been going on for... <laughs> Uh, decades. Uh, I think it goes all the way back in the 70s. What they would do is that these teachers would give these students, little kids, a marshmallow, and they would say, if you actually uh, not refrain from taking the marshmallow, uh, and you will, if you are willing to wait, then um, I can give you a, a second marshmallow. But the teacher would leave, leaving the 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 kid or the student by themselves with the marshmallow alone in a room. And so the video captures the kids waiting, uh, playing with it, smelling it, and then just, you know, ultimately uh, consuming the marshmallow. They obviously, like many of us, couldn't delay, didn't have the discipline to, for, for uh, delaying self-gratification. So they lost out on getting another. Instead of one, they would have two if they would just wait, be patient, endure. And so they did in, in 2020, they, they did another test. And this time, instead of one person, they have two kids and each of them had one marshmallow. But they said, in order for you to have a second one, both of you, both of you would have to refrain from eating the marshmallow. So the difference, they were partnered together with the same rules. And sure enough, they were able to significantly uh, refrain. Not everyone was perfect, but the chances of people, uh, the kids, re uh, restraining themselves was much more significant, much more better. Why? Because they didn't want to let each other down. And I believe that's what Jesus operated. He didn't want to be disobedient to the Father that's why he prayed, my will, not, not my will be done, but your will be done. He was always submissive to the Father through the Holy Spirit. And this is key for Pentecost. This is key for his Spirit being poured upon all flesh and bringing the church into unity in oneness. That each of us are very different, we're diverse, and that's a beauty and that's a blessing from the Lord. But the key is coming together as one, one in heart, one in mind, and one in action, all pointed towards Christ. And so this is what we want to encourage. Uh, we look to begin on May 11, uh, Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. right now via Zoom in coming together in prayer.
praying, interceding as one, and, and asking Jesus to baptize us in his spirit so that our hearts and our minds can be fashioned, can be shaped. He can circumcise our hearts. He can renew our minds, all centered on him, but also committed to each other. One of the biggest things I, I, that I, I don't want to do is let people down. I'm not perfect. But man, letting somebody down is probably the, the most painful thing, the most, the things that would grieve me the most if I let down my wife, my kids, and obviously the people, the flock of God. And this is what God develops in us is to practice self-restraint. Each of us is better. The group is better. The, the church is better. Community, families. A nation is better when we learn how to be interdependent, interconnected, rather than independent and disconnected. So I pray that the Lord would minister to all of us, not just myself or not just you, but all of us, so that we be one with the Lord and be one with each other to receive the fulfillment of God's plans and purposes through all of our lives and all of our families, all throughout Hawaii, and beyond. May the Lord bless you.